In episode four, we get a look back at Juliet's past. She had a great relationship with her family, her mom, her brother, and her dad. But once her brother and her mom died, her and her dad just couldn't see eye to eye. Eventually, a 13-year-old Juliet got sick of it. She headed down to Mechanical because she liked fixing things, and that's where she met Martha. She forged a note from her dad saying that he was okay with her taking up residency in the Down Deep and becoming an apprentice with the hopes of doing something. Martha didn't know Juliet, but she did know her mom. And when Martha tried to send Juliet back up to the mids, Juliet pushed back. And Martha recognized that because Juliet's mom would have done the same thing. Martha then called in a teenager by the name of Knox and told him to take Juliet under his wing. The thing is, Martha knew that that note was doctored, so she did end up making a call to Juliet's father. And he arrived a day later. He asked Juliet if she was okay, and she says, yeah, I mean, I'm tired. They work me really hard down here, but it helps me forget about losing my mother and my brother. And because of that, the doctor let Juliet stay. Adult Juliet, though, is very far from being that little girl. No longer working in the down deep, she's excited to get her start as sheriff, although it gets jump-started pretty quickly when she arrives to find that the mayor has been murdered, and Marnes isn't doing so well. You've got Bernard and Sims also in the room trying to calm him down, but he wants vengeance against whoever did this. What really is breaking him up is the fact that he's convinced the poison was meant for him. Marnes tells both of them that whoever did this did it in the mids. They did it at the deputy station because they went for a walk and that would have been the time where their bottles would have been poisoned. He demands a list of people that they might have encountered from the mids who had a criminal record. The more Bernard and Sims talk to him, though, the more upset he gets. He also does not want to talk to Juliet. In fact, nobody in the room is a fan of the fact that Juliet is becoming sheriff. But Bernard, who is the mayor for the time being, is going to honor the last wish of Mayor Janes. Bernard, Juliet... And Sims decide to let Marnes blow some steam off, cool down a bit. So they let him be. This gives Juliet a chance to get acclimated to her new surroundings. Sandy, who used to be Holston's assistant, is tasked with showing Juliet around to her office and her new quarters, which used to be Holston's. It becomes apparent to Juliet pretty quickly that Sandy feels the same as pretty much everybody else, that she doesn't deserve to be sheriff although Sandy doesn't do a good job hiding it at all. Anytime Juliet asks for something, Sandy's response is, you'll get it when you're sworn in, even though Juliet being sworn in is just a formality at this point. The thing that Juliet really wants is George's file. Sandy gives her attitude about it, kind of complaining about how she's following orders, but she doesn't understand why Juliet's there, and Juliet cuts her off and explains, I'm the sheriff, I'm your boss. So can we get over whatever this is and you go get me George's file? And a very reluctant Sandy walks out. Once she does leave, Juliet starts looking around the office for any clue of what Holston might have found. Although after a bit, she comes up empty and she just decides to go to her new apartment. Once she does arrive, the first thing she notices is how hot it is in there. She turns on the air conditioner, and she hears a rattling sound going on through the vent. She didn't think anything of it. In fact, it kind of calms her down a bit because she's so used to hearing things like that being from the down deep. So she doesn't try to fix it. She does find a card that welcomes her as a new occupant, but says, please send any unwanted items of the previous tenant to recycling for proper distribution. There's nothing really that fits that description left in the apartment. So for Juliet, that card really doesn't mean much. There's then a knock at the door, and it's Bernard, with a deputy holding her new uniform as sheriff. She's also going to be sworn in as the new sheriff. Juliet says aloud how this is kind of ironic, Bernard being the one to do this because he is, after all, the one that accused her of stealing. And he once again asks her, well, did you steal? And she says, no, I appropriated it because we needed it. Bernard then tells her that she was not his choice for the position. But considering the recent events, he figures it's best to just let bygones be bygones. And they both agree to 
let that just be in the past. Forge a new working relationship together. Now officially being sworn in, she has access to all those things that she didn't before. So she continues to start looking around for a clue that she's not finding. And her day gets worse when Sandy lets her know that Judicial doesn't have a file for George. She does, however, have a file from Holson that was left behind. And once Juliet looks in it, there's a lot of pieces of paper, but one sticks out. It says, double the gloves in front of the mirror. Juliet doesn't even get a chance to really think about it because Sandy comes in and says, are you not hearing the radio? You need to go. Marnes is getting in a fight right now. Once Juliet goes to see what's going on with Marnes, he's got some poor soul jacked up against a wall as he starts beating on him, demanding to know answers as to why he poisoned the mayor. And this guy didn't poison the mayor. Juliet is able to cool down the situation, and she goes and takes Marnes for a drink, like coffee, because alcohol is the last thing this guy needs. It's becoming a trend, but he tells her the same thing that everyone's told her, that Juliet was not his choice for this job, and she feels like it's a good time to explain why she took the job. She tells Marnes all about this hidden clue from Holston that was left behind, and then she makes Marnes a proposition. You help me find out who killed George, and I'll help you find out who killed the mayor. And Marnes is in. Marnes was able to get that list of guys who had a criminal record that they might have encountered. Up until this point, his whole vigilante justice wasn't going so hot. But the next name on his list was someone named Patrick. He and Marnes clearly have a past, and they also clearly do not like each other. But Marnes didn't come to talk to Patrick. He came to talk to Patrick's wife. Patrick finds that a little funny because his wife died a year ago, and he blames Marnes for it. Marnes makes a snide remark about how Patrick's wife died the moment she met Patrick, and Patrick goes off and clocks Marnes right in the face. Juliet, once again, has to cool that situation down, and she takes Marnes back to his apartment. She asks, what's up with this Patrick guy? And Marnes explains that Patrick Kennedy had previous issues with extortion and also robbery. There was also a jam with judicial over relics. To Juliet, it seems like Marnes just kind of has a vendetta against this guy, so she's going to let him handle that. But she decides to ask him if he ever noticed a hard drive in Holston's safe or apartment or anything. And Marnes tells her, check recycling. Any personal effects of Holston's would have ended up there. And up until this point, Juliet hadn't even considered that they probably already cleaned his apartment out. So if that hard drive were there, yeah, it probably would be in recycling. She's going to look into it, but then they start talking about the whole situation with the mayor. She understands why Marnes is convinced that he was the target for the assassination, but she thinks there is a possibility that the target actually was the mayor. I mean, after all, she is the mayor. And Marnes just doesn't buy that. The mayor was well-liked by basically everybody. To him, he can't figure out who in the world would want to kill her. That's when Juliet notices that Marnes has a picture that he drew of the mayor hanging on his wall. And she knows that this was way more personal than she even realized. She decides to let Marnes be, but asks him, Should we put a deputy outside if you are so convinced that someone's out to kill you? And he says, no, don't, don't worry about that. I got a shotgun. I'm good. Once Juliet leaves, Marnes decides to start drinking and taking out his frustrations on a heavy bag. He does, though, get a visitor. It's Sims. Sims is pretty surprised to see the state of Marnes, like his face being banged up. Marnes tells Sims how it was Patrick Kennedy. He went to go visit his wife because his wife had threatened Marnes a few times, and she definitely meant it, but he found out that his wife had died. And this doesn't really come as a surprise to Sims because Marnes kind of has that personality that invites you to punch him in the face. Sims, however, did not come to just chat with Marnes and make sure he's doing okay. He brought good news. He tells Marnes that Judge Meadows is ready to make Juliet a former sheriff and put Paul Billings in the position. All they need is Marnes and Mayor Bernard to sign off on it. If only Sims were to come to him about two hours ago, he would have been all for this. But after him and Juliet had come to an understanding about their relationship, 
Marnes isn't about to ouster from the position. He, though, doesn't tell Sims this. He says, yeah, I'm not ready to do that. She knows that she's not wanted, so let's let her screw up, and then she'll end up back in the down deep before you know it. While those two were chatting, Juliet had made her way down to recycling. She asked the woman if she came across a metal box that might have had a bunch of paper with some writing in it, and the woman tells her no. That kind of description, she would have remembered something like that. So Juliet, a little frustrated, just says, well, if you come across it, let me know directly. Juliet then made her way back to her apartment, but she had to go to the cafeteria to get there. She runs into a guy, though, in the cafeteria. His name's Lucas, and she's noticed him before, but it's odd. He's sitting by himself, and he's just staring out into the abyss. They have a very awkward interaction. Lucas trying to be friendly and nice, and Juliet just being extremely uncomfortable. Once Juliet is able to get out of that conversation, she continues to make her way to her apartment, and she gets a radio from Martha. Martha tells her that she's come across something that requires her insight. Martha is intentionally trying to be kind of covert, because after all, anyone could be listening to this broadcast. And Juliet, picking up on that, just tells her she'll find some time to get down there and find out what she's talking about. Martha then asks Juliet how are things going, and Juliet tells her well. She actually thinks she's found an ally. But Juliet doesn't know that that ally, Marnes, he's getting tuned up that night. He is plastered. And it ends up being the last night he gets tuned up. Because that night, Marnes is attacked in his apartment. And while he puts up a good fight, the guy ends up getting the shotgun away from Marnes and ultimately killing him. Juliet, though, is unaware of this murder. She went back to her apartment, and the first thing that greeted her was the sound from the vent. And then she thought it was kind of weird. She decided to investigate it, and it turned out that that was a hint from Holston. He had left it there. It was a metal washer attached to a string, and when she pulled the string, there was George's file. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.